Hi there, Stampers. This is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations. And I'm here with a little bit of a different Facebook Live today. Um, normally we do some more advanced cards, and I recently had someone tell me that they got um, an embossing machine and some embossing folders for Christmas, and she wanted to know what to do with them. So I'm going to share a few simple things for her, and then a few more advanced techniques for those of you who already know all about embossing folders. Um, so I've brought in my Big Shot. I have that to the side, and I have the basic plates that come with my Big Shot. And so I have the Big Shot platform, and then the thin die adapter, and then two clear plates. On the, the platforms are actually instructions. And so if you're wondering what to do or how to make a sandwich, as they call it, um, this tells you how to line up your plates so that you can get the best results from the machine. If you have a cuddle bug or you know something different, they too should have a little bit of instructions that'll tell you how things go together. Um, there are a couple different ideas for the um, textured impressions embossing folders. There are several different kinds now. We started out where they were all the same. And now we've gotten some extra thick, like they call them dynamic. And then we've got some that Stampin' Up! has come out. It's their version, and it's called 3D. And so they're all a little different. And, you know, I apologize for any confusion that's causing people. But if you have your standard, regular old embossing folders, you've had them around for a while, or they're an older style, then all you have to do is load your basic platform. I'm going to set the thin die adapter off to the side because we don't need that. And then you're going to place one folder or one plate, your folder. You would put your cardstock inside and then you would put your second plate on and you would run it through the machine. And then that would give you your raised embossed, we call it dry embossing effect on this cardstock. If you have one of those dynamic ones, the extra thick ones I was talking about, then you want to just place that directly on here with your cardstock in the middle. We always want to put the cardstock in the middle, and we always want to have the decal on the top. I know at least with Stampin' Up, if you have the, the logo on the front, then you're doing it the direction it's intended for. You can have it embossed or you can have it debossed. It will go either way, but this is the preferred or the way it was designed for. But anyway, we would take the platform, the thick dynamic embossing folder, and then one plate. And then this would run through the machine and you would get your effect. When Stampin' Up! decided to start making their own, they were a little bit thinner than the dynamics. And in order to accommodate that, to put those in the older machines, they came out with this additional plate. And all this is, is this plate's a little bit thicker than the standard plate that comes with your machine. And so this just gives a little more pressure. If you don't have this um, blue plate, you could also try using some of the machines I know come with my, mine came with this little rubber mat. I have put that underneath and then this and then my clear plate and ran that through and that has worked. You can also use shims. If somebody says use a shim on your embossing folder, that means that you're going to want to put some extra pieces of cardstock underneath just to give it a little bit of thickness. Um, usually one or two sheets of cardstock will do it. Um, if not, you can use the backing that comes on the on the back of the glimmer paper chipboard. <laughs> uh, you could use that as a shim as well. Now, all of these, I'm basically talking about embossing an entire layer of a card. So this is our layered leaves embossing folder, and I just did an entire sheet of a different color to do a layer. And so that's what dry embossing looks like, just basic here's an embossed layer. Here I've used it as a piece of a layer. Um, here's another one. This is um, bricks in the background. This is bricks and mortar. Here I have the 
pine wood planks, I think they call it. Um, and that's just done with very vanilla. Here I've done it with cherry cobbler. And here I've done it with pool party. So you can use the same embossing folder and get totally different looks just by changing up the color of your cardstock. Mm -hmm. You can also choose to use the same color as your card base. On this one, I used a balmy blue card base and then a balmy blue layer um, of layered leaves that's dry embossed. Um, this one I've just used the tufted. Um, so this is really pretty and I have seen people that have gone and put rhinestones or pearls in the, the crisscross of each one of these and that's a really pretty look as well. This one is a little different. This is a more advanced technique. Like I said, I would throw a few of those in there. For this one, I dry embossed the wood planks embossing folder on silver foil paper. And then I just matted it with my Versamark. I just took the lid off and then I just patted it all over that layer. And then I used embossing powder and rather than making it spread evenly, I dumped a little here, a little here, a little here of the copper and then, you know, tapped off the excess, heated that up. And then I did the same thing with the gold. And so I've got kind of a burnished metal here here by having the silver foil and then copper and gold embossing powder just sprinkled randomly on the top. So that's another thing. Another thing I like to do, um, one of my more popular Pinterest pins is where I used the Woodlands embossing folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this, this part is raised on this side and this is indented. So your cardstock, when you put it in there, is going to give you the reverse effect. So if it's raised on this side, it's going to make my cardstock debossed into that because this raised part here is pushing onto the cardstock into the, the groove up here. So when I pull my cardstock out, this is going to be the side raised. So that means that for this effect, I want to stamp on this side, the, the part that's going in. And what I'm going to do, so I'm going to just mount a regular tree onto a block, and then I'm going to ink this up. And then I'm going to stamp directly onto my embossing folder. So I'm just going to do some random trees in the background, and then I'm going to place my cardstock flat on top of it, being careful not to move it too much because I don't want it to spread, you know, and wiggle around. But then I'm gonna, this is a standard embossing folder, so I'm gonna make my standard sandwich. So what that did is that made the trees appear to be in the background. Now I could go through here, um, if I had done this with say beige, I could come in with a white chalk marker or the white gel pen and use the gel pen inside those little wells and it would make the trees pop a little more. You could also sponge some blue on the top of the embossing folder as well. There's lots of different things you can do, but the idea is if you stamp onto the embossing folder itself, it's going to only apply the ink to the parts of the embossing folder that are raised. The parts that are raised are going to push into your cardstock. Make sense? Another thing we can do is emboss a piece of cardstock. So I'll take this as our country floral. Oh, and to clean this up, all I do is rinse this off with water. All of our standard Stampin' Up! inks are water-based, and so that'll just rinse right off. No problems at all. So here's one of those dynamic um, embossing folders, and like I said, it gives a really deep raised effect. Now I could use this plane just as it is, or I can come in with uh, markers or Stampin' Blends or whatever it is I want to use and I can color right on top of this. So I could take and color the raised parts and make it really pop. So again, I'm not going to do all of this. I'm just trying to give you an idea of some of the different techniques you can use embossing folders for. So if I went around this entire thing and I just colored all the flowers, you can see how pretty that would be highlighting the raised areas of this card. And I've done this before, so I'm sure there's an example of this on my blog. There's the stamping onto the embossing folder. Here's coloring them after it's embossed. Another time you might want to color after it's embossed is if you're using vellum. Vellum gives a really pretty effect. So let's use this um, magnolia this time. And so if I'm gonna put this in here and run it through, 
This is the new style, so I'm using my blue plate. And you know, it gets a little bit confusing sometimes on what plates that you need to use with these various things, so it might be a good idea to, you know, talk to me, ask me which ones need to be used for which types, um, what sandwich. And you can put a little sticker not only with the name on it, but you can also put a little sticker with the sandwich that you need to use. That might be a good way to remember. Um, so here is an effect on vellum. So again, that gives a really pretty raised effect. Um, and it kind of makes the raised, the deeper raised parts appear in white. And so that might be an effect you're looking for, or it may just be something that you want to come in and highlight from the back side. You know, and again, you can do this with whatever colors that you want to play around with. I encourage you to be adventurous as you play around with things, because um, that's how you find out new ideas and things to do. So again, we could come in and I'm using the darker in the middle. Um, I think I'll go out to the edge with the, the dark. And then we can come in with the light. Again, these are Stampin' Blends, and so I'm trying to work quickly because we don't want it to dry because the sooner we can get them moving, the better they're gonna blend. Because this is on vellum, it's a little more slick. It doesn't dry as quickly, so it works very well with the blends. And it gives it kind of a stained glass effect. And again, I'm not doing this per perfectly. I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas of what you can do with embossing folders. And again, I'm coloring this from the back side because, again, it takes a while to dry. And it the vellum will give it kind of a muted look to it. So from this side, it's gonna be much more muted than if you colored it on the front. See, this way I can see a little more of my brush strokes, which, you know, normally the Stampin' Blends won't give us, but flipping it over, it just gives it a more opaque, soft look. So if you're going for kind of a stained glass effect, embossing on the vellum and coloring from the back side may be what you're looking for. You can also choose to cut out some shapes. You know, say you already had a card idea in mind and you wanted to put, you know, a circle back there and you wanted to emboss just that circle, you can put that in there. Valentine's Day is coming up. Maybe you want to put a heart in here and emboss just the shape. That can be used on a layer as well. So here I can just emboss a layer. Say if you were going to be doing a Valentine's Day card. Now again, this is just some scrap papers and so pardon my color choices as we play with this, but if this was say a heart shape um, and you put, the flowers would be good. Oh, and the tufted, that would be really pretty too. I could see a red heart with the tufted embossed folder. So that's another idea you could use. Another one I have here is, like if you had an embossing folder that had just like a snowflake in the middle or a single flower, you could easily take and put that into your acetate box. And so you would slip it down on the side where it's smooth is. You wouldn't want the flap you want just the smooth side and you're gonna slide the acetate between the two layers of the embossing folder and then run it through your machine and it will make a really pretty embossed look on the acetate as well. I'm grabbing another piece because I don't have the right kind of folder unless I went over there and dipped into my retired ones. But this will give you the idea of what it'll do. This could also be the layer for a card as you just have a piece of acetate that you have dry embossed. So see how pretty that is? So say if you had, like I said, a flower, a snowflake, something, you could dry emboss that in the center of the acetate box and then fill it with cards that you're gonna use as gifts. And then you could wrap it up with some ribbon and um, make a really pretty present out of it. And, and that way you've even decorated the box. You can also choose to emboss just a section. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a heart that I have that I, probably didn't use the right embossing folder. On the back you can see a little better. So this is debossed when it goes in, and this is embossed when it comes up. Now I'm starting to lose things. But how I did that was I used a piece of chipboard, you know, kind of a thin cardboard, and I cut out the shape of a heart, and then I set my paper inside the embossing folder. It was here a minute ago, I swear. And then I set the, the cardboard heart on the top. 
and then I ran it through the machine. Now, because the cardboard is gonna be about the thickness of my plate, I'm not gonna use my plate. I'm only gonna use that piece of cardboard as I feed it through the machine. And because it's only gonna put pressure on whatever shape that I have set on top of it, it'll only emboss that section because how this is embossing is it's putting pressure on the two sides. And so since the pressure is only gonna be in the shape of a heart or a circle or an oval, whatever you choose to use, then that's what's gonna be embossed. Now you can also do the reverse. You could take a piece of chipboard that's this size, cut the heart out of the middle, use that this way but then you could use your negative and you could use that with your heart taken out of the middle here and use this part to run it through and then it's only going to emboss the outer edge and not the middle you can also choose to maybe put the layer halfway in and then run that through your embossing machine and then it's only going to emboss half of it so then you could put maybe some um, ribbon or washi tape across the middle and create a card that way. There's any number of ideas that you can do with embossing folders. So I would hope that you would give it a try, pull them out. Again, if you have any questions, you wanna know what's the proper sandwich for whichever embossing folder that you have, we can obviously talk about that. I can help you order any new ones if you want. If you're looking to do this tree background with the woodland and the, this tree is from Winter Woods um, and we still sell this one as well. Get out your embossing folders in your machine and give it a try. There's lots of beautiful cards you can create. Create. Thanks for joining me.